Okay, so what we're going to talk about now is reactions of anhydrides. And so what this does is this is, this word, you should be able to look at that word and see exactly what that means. We're talking about without water, anhydrides. So that tells us that right here. Um, you can memorize this or you can just think about it. I, would, I wouldn't memorize it. I would just think about what's going on with these two statements where with an anhydride you have met metallic oxides that yield bases and non-metallic oxides yield acids. What that means is, um, let's say, when added to water. And you have seen this before. When you looked at the back of those blue sheets for reactions, which we, um, when we came back from the Christmas break, we started looking at predicting products of reactions. And you see the little reactions on the back side, the helpful hints for some special cases. You see that if you take a metal oxide and you add it to water, it's going to f uh, yield a metal hydroxide. Well, that's your base. And then if you take a non-metal oxide and add it to water, it's going to yield an acid. So that information is given to you. But, um, and you've used that before, but now we're going to talk about it in terms of anhydrides. And of course the reverse, the opposite, is going to be true as well. So let's do some examples here. And what our uh, instructions tell us is to write a balanced equation for this. So the first one start off pretty easy. We have copper 2 oxide plus water copper 2 oxide, so we know it's plus 2 minus 2, and we add water. Okay, so when you look at that, even if you never saw any rules such as what we have here, you would look at this and say, okay, well, I've got one metal ion, which is copper, so that copper, I've got to start with that, and it's got to be, any guesses on what it is? Okay, in words, what is that? Copper hydroxide, and so it's going to be the copper 2 hydroxide, which we started with copper 2, so it's still going to be copper 2. So copper 2 hydroxide plus 2 minus 1 looks like that. And then we come back and balance, and it's balanced, so we're done. That's all there is to it. You've done that before with predicting products. I'm going to come back and the instructions say to box the anhydride. We'll do that after we've written a few of these down. Okay, next one is just as easy. Sodium oxide plus 1 minus 2 plus water. Okay, so think about what this is going to form. And it is going to form, in words, what's it going to form? Sodium hydroxide. So NaOH. And then we need to balance that. Okay, so now what we have is we have our two reactions that we've done so far. We just showed sodium oxide and water goes to sodium hydroxide. So in each case, in fact, I can go ahead and even do that last part of our instructions now. It says to box in the anhydride. So think about what an anhydride is. That first example, anybody spy the anhydride? Copper hydroxide. Copper. Why are we saying hydroxide? That looks like a base to me. It's not hydroxide. Copper oxide. Copper oxide. So if you look back, look back at what it tells us, we see that uh, it's always going to be an oxide. And our metallic oxides, they happen to yield bases, but your anhydrides are always going to be the oxides. So copper oxide, sodium oxide, that's going to be our anhydride as well. So what I'm doing is I'm boxing these guys right here. Okay, let's do another one. We have uh, iron 3 hydroxide and it looks like that and it says that it's heated. So I'm not going to illustrate this with kilojoules like we just did. Instead I'm just showing it's a decomposition reaction that is heated. So this, how could you classify FeOH3? It's considered what? Go back to here. What's it considered? Out of any of this stuff, it is considered a base. A base, a base, a base. 
It's a base because there is our hydroxide. So our iron 3 hydroxide is a base. It works in the opposite direction. Instead of forming a base, we can decompose that base. And we know, start with the easy stuff, you know it's going to form water, right? And then the other thing that it forms would be, in words, would be iron oxide. In fact, iron 3 oxide, which is Fe2O3. And then we balance like that, and we're done. Okay, so can you identify the anhydride? There we go. There we go. Um, okay, next one. Carbon dioxide, CO2, plus water. So in this case, this gets a little bit tougher now. This one's not too bad, though, because we really only have one option. We know, and if you look at your notes, or you could look at the back of your reference sheets, and you'd see this one for those special cases to predicting products, that if you have a non-metallic oxide plus water, it yields acids. acids. Okay, so it, it yields an acid, so we know that's going to be hydrogen. What's our polyatomic ion going to be? So, good, carbonate, which is carbonic acid. And it is balanced. So let's go ahead and box in our anhydride on this one. It is what? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. Every single time, carbon di or your anhydride is on the same side of the equation as what? Water. So that's something to make a note of. And I don't know if I should have said this earlier or not, but it seems like when we have this quiz, this quiz is historically a quiz that people do not do well on the anhydrides. And it's not hard, so make sure you understand what's being asked. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to understand why it goes different. The acid is plus Okay. I'm going to answer that question with the next couple that we do, because then we can come back and relate it to this one. But um, there's going to be other times that you have more choices on what the acid could be that it forms. Okay, this, um, in fact, this is a good example, this next one. If we have diphosphorus pentoxide, so diphosphorus pentoxide plus water yields, well, here we have a non-metal oxide plus water, so it's got to yield an acid. Uh-oh, what acid is it going to yield? I have a few different options. It could be, somebody yell out one option. So phosphate, meaning phosphoric acid, which would be H3PO4, or what? Phosphorus, H3PO3. So what you need to do is just go through and look at your charges, your oxidation numbers. And I'm going to write total charges. I'm not going to write my oxidation numbers. I, mean, I know that hydrogen's plus one, so I'm just going to make myself a little note saying plus three. I know oxygen's minus two, so I have a total of minus eight. So for my phosphorus, that gives me a total of plus five. So plus five on that one. Here I have that plus, uh, plus three and minus six, so that gives me a total of plus three. So what I need to do is I need to look in my reactants there at my non-metal oxide, and what's the charge of my phosphorus? Plus five, because you know oxygen's minus two. So it's plus five. That's what I need it to be is that plus five. So it's not this one. It is the phosphoric acid. So H3PO4. And does that answer? You could do the same thing with your H2CO3, but we really didn't have any other options. We knew that that was really the only thing that could have been formed. So when we balance, should just be that. Okay, next one is nitric acid. Got to know your acid nomenclature. And we decompose it with heat. Again, always start with the easy stuff. We know it's going to break down to form. What's the easy thing? Water. And some sort of nitrogen oxide compound. So I'm not going to go through the writing at all, but look at this compound, HNO3. Do the math. And the nitrogen has what charge? Plus 5. So that's going to mean that over here, we've got our oxygen that has a minus 2. Nitrogen has a plus 5. So N2O5 is our only possibility. 
And then finally, we have perchloric acid. So H perchlorate is ClO4 minus 1. We decompose it into water. And chlorine oxygen compound. So again, stare at the perchloric acid and try and figure out what the charge of chlorine is. And we come up with the answer of plus 7. So it's going to be Cl2O7.